Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy had to go to run. He had to go. Where he went? I don't know. To flip yeah, some he has his um, LA conference. Him and Big weekend. Pun going to do something. Yes. <laughs> Tony Sunshine and Big Pun going to perform somewhere. <laughs> but we got a special guest in the building. Hey, this is our friend, Melissa Ford. Machine Gun Hi. Melee. Hi, guys. What does your shirt say? Um, lick me till I scream. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I mean, your t-shirt game is so on point that I had to come in here and rep. <laughs> Phenomenally black. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I love your t-shirts. Well, congratulations, Melissa. Thanks. First of all, because you guys have the show now on iHeart. I know. Like, what was iHeart thinking? You know, um, <laughs> I I love it. It's um, you know, Jason and I started Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored as the podcast, literally like what well, just over three years ago, and mm. um. No promise of anything. We just literally sat down in front of a couple of mics and just started talking shit to each other, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and it just, we just discovered we had a lot of like really dope chemistry. And so. Y'all do have yeah. good chemistry. Jason Lee can be a bit much. I like, like him. You think? All right. No. <laughs> but he can be a bit exhausting. He's a shrinking violet. What are you talking about? You know. Um, How do you deal with him? Uh, well, how does Angela deal with you? That's a good, that's a good point. So, no, so, Ange, let me ask you this. Woo. When it, do people come after you for his opinions? They like, have. don't you? Why don't you keep him in line? How could you let him go off All on black time. women like They're, this? And like, it's, it's just my like, fault. I'm like, I can't make him say anything, and I don't always. Agree yeah. with what he says. There's yeah. nothing I can do about it. It's, and it, imagine you argue everything all the time. People, mm-hmm. Then people get mad if you argue. Yeah. And people be like, oh, why do you got to spoil everything by disagreeing? It doesn't matter. You can't win no matter yeah. what you do. Yeah. No, that's clear because I'm in the comments and I'm like, this shit is exhausting. Hey, I'm out. You're not responsible for what Jason says. I'm, it's like I'm, he's not responsible for what I said. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. It, it, and I love the fact that he has such a big, bold opinion and he is like fearless in expressing it. That is him. That's his shtick. I am the voice of reason. Yeah. You know, I'm the myth buster, Hello. fact checker, and I represent <laughs> for women. I'm the, you know, I'm swimming in testosterone in the studio with him and DJ Damage. I know. Don't you feel like when you leave work that you're like, I don't even want to talk to a guy for two hours at least. I just need to decompress. Um, That's... I guess no, no. I, guess I feel like bit. that. I'd be like, I need to have some women around me and just to like get back to myself for a minute. The dynamics not different because Jason is gay though. Like me and Envy just fake gay. Like Jason <laughs> is really gay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. You know what? Jason is uh, one of the most alpha males I've ever met in my life. Right. You know, he doesn't lead with his sexuality. He just also doesn't, you know, hide it. Right. Um, so he's very, very manly. Let you me know? ask you this, because yeah. uh, DJ Damage uh, came on the show later than mm-hmm. you did. How many hosts did you guys have to go through? Because we talk about chemistry and how difficult that is until you guys came to the three of y'all. This is it. Well, Jason d- didn't have any radio experience. Mm-hmm. and um, But he'd done, you know, kind of like a show with you and Claudia Jordan. The it was funeral. called The Funeral. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Little Mo? Was it? Little Mo was Little on Mo there. Was on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my God, that show would have been up train wreck <laughs> well, yeah, that, that pilot was that pilot, <laughs> reckless I hope they burned the, that, the audio from that oh no pilot. it's still available trust me I, yeah, I heard <laughs> let's pull that up oh yeah like, that, oh, we was wild. it's gonna come back to haunt you oh um, he's nervous but Jason was actually okay. pretty quiet in it because trying to get a word in edgewise while you and Claudia Jordan were talking was almost impossible that was supposed to be you though really yeah, I remember Jason saying it was supposed to be you but I don't know it was probably available. because you no know, it's probably because I lived here at the time or something. Gotcha. I, I don't know. It was, uh, or I was doing Blood, Sweat, and Heels or I don't know, something. But, and you um, have radio experience. Yeah, so, that, you know, that's where we met. That's mm-hmm. where our little love affair began yes. um, over at Sirius Radio. So when we decided to do the podcast, I said, we need somebody who's completely different from us. We Like, let's get a comedian, you mm-hmm. know, so we can kind of break things up. Somebody who has knowledge in sports, definitely a guy. Um, and so we started interviewing comedians from um, All Deaf Digital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they brought a whole bunch of them in. And so our first, we picked out this guy named Doughboy. Doughboy. Yeah. He flamed out in about five episodes. What happened? I guess he, my my perception of it, he really, he was concerned with his career, you know, and elevating it and moving through the ranks of, you know, comedy and whatnot. But I don't think that he really understood the opportunity, mm-hmm. you know. Because um, it is a grind at first. Because it is a real grind. You're not promised anything. When you start podcasts, there's there's no money in that. Right. There's, nope. there's zero money in podcasting. There's a lot of commitment and no money. Exactly. There's zero money in podcasting un- until you have an audience um, and then you've, or you're talking about something niche. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you're talking about 
knitting with a certain kind of crochet technique. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you got 5,000 diehard knitting fans <laughs> listening to your podcast, then you're probably going to get, you know, sponsors and advertisers that are related to the content that you're producing. But podcasting, there's no promise until you build your own audience and that takes some time. And then advertisers and sponsors, if you're lucky, they come in. Um, so we had no promise of money. And so I guess he just didn't really see the long, the long run, mm -hmm. which is fine. And then I was like, Jason, we are not going to keep on doing this with co-hosts. We need to keep the chair empty with recurring hosts and let our audience choose who you love. Right. You know, and so we had a bunch of different people. I was really par partial to um, Spank Horton. Oh, yeah. He's um, Spank. Yeah. Spank ain't got time for that. No, well, now he doesn't. Yeah, now, yeah. At the time, he at did. The time he had time. At the time, he had a little, <laughs> little, 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 little time on his hands. Um, but he's, you know, he's not as big as he is now. The Red Cup boys and, you know, <laughs> Kevin didn't have um, LOL uh, network yet. So he was my choice. Mm -hmm. um, at, but, I can see why you would want that. Yeah. Spank is very dope. Spank is hysterical. Yeah. Um, and, but we ended up with Gio because mm -hmm. the people chose him. Um, and he was a really great dynamic. People used to get on my case about, you know, Melissa's such a pretentious bitch. She's so mean to Gio. I'm like, he loves being my punching bag. You know, <laughs> Jason kept insinuating that he was gay. It's fun. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's fun. Um, but then that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Why did, Why that, did that, work? that not work out? Um, you got tired of being called gay? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, um, that's, that's becoming my breaking point no, as well. I, hysterical. No. Who um, are you looking at? <laughs> he actually departed from the show while I was gone recovering from my car accident. So I guess there was just like, you know shit happens. Breakdown and dynamic. Um, and then just stuff that is kind of personal. Um, that's not my business to reveal. Honestly. We needed our buffer in the room. Our voice of reason. Yeah, well, the voice of reason was, you know, literally right. still trying to get her life together. Never talk after. about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so DJ Damage came in, and Damage is so different from, you know, Jason and I and everybody who came before him because he's just so produced. I mean, he's, he's a radio guy. He's a walking Colgate commercial. Yeah, he's a radio guy. <laughs> Very professional. Yeah. Super professional, you know, super produced. And, you know, uh, my God, watching him do ads, I'm just literally staring at him like, <laughs> you need that though. Like no, that's, I know. That, that's, you, we that's, need the discipline. Yeah, he was the piece that Hollywood Unlocked needed to be a show. Yeah, show. we needed the discipline. We the needed structure. the, the structure. It. Exactly. We needed the structure, and he provides that structure. And I just think, as um, you know, just as a package deal for iHeart, we just looked really, you Absolutely. know, really appealing. Um, so Doc Winters, who you and Doc Winters, so thank you. Um, but you've you've been known how like dope we were yeah absolutely 100 <laughs> and you talked to doc about it and finally you know people started to kind of get the get the memo and mm -hmm. now here we are i heart part of the i heart family now there was a period of time when we didn't think you would be able to come back to the show and you had a no. really bad accident yeah that you posted about and you suffered from depression after that so yeah. talk about that tragedy and what happened um well uh i was going to tanks uh Fiance, now wife, Zena Foster, sorry, Zena Babs. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to her bridal shower. And it was uh, June 28th, uh, 2018, at exactly 12.37 p.m. And I know this because my phone was mounted, GPS. I was in an area of L.A. that I'm not familiar with, um, border of Pasadena and, and Glendale. I was on the 134. And there was um, a semi truck next to me, you know, um, tractor trailer, a lot of dirt on it. And um, the rest of the highway was empty, surprisingly enough. And so I had on like this Diane von Furstenberg dress. It was bad. Hair done, jewelry on, everything. And high heels and stuff like that. And then um, the tractor trailer was kind of swaying back and forth. And I believe that the tire connected with my back tire because I had there was this massive impact that I felt that, you know, kicked my tire out and like instantly put me into like a spin. And I was driving a beast of a Jeep. Like my Wrangler was my, oh, I love this thing. Every time I came outside and I saw it in my driveway, I was like, hi, I love you. You know, <laughs> it was like my dream to right. have like a Wrangler since I was a little girl. And I had a three inch suspension kit on it, 36 inch tires, like shit was bad. Um, but also that suspension kit, like it was really 
you know, it was it did not feel stable, especially after getting hit by um, a truck. So it started to spin out and I tried to counter the spin. I don't know if I made it worse or made it better. I wasn't manipulating the pedals, but at one point I just I realized I was going to flip. Mm. And that this was, so scary. This, this was just it. And Were so, you in front of the truck or behind it? No, it was to the side of it. Side of it. Okay. Yeah. Um. And so, uh, and my I, I literally could see my exit. Like, and so they say that the accidents happen within five minutes of your destination. Um. Super true in my in my case. And so, as soon as I realized that, like that my car was gonna flip over, um, I just took my hands off the off the wheel and mm. I just kind of sat there and it waited for it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, Do you remember those moments, like before it flipped? I just thought to myself, um, I'm not gonna make it. Really? Oh my you, God. you thought you was gonna? Yeah, Ugh. yeah. Um, sorry, I don't like wanna no. get like emotional. But um, yeah, when you think to yourself, like I'm not gonna make it, you just you gotta make peace with that, mm -hmm. you know. And so, my um, so the Jeep flips, and <clears throat> what I remember most was no, my girl did my makeup today. Fuck that! I'm fighting <laughs> this, okay? <laughs> I'm fighting this, okay? <laughs> huh. Um, so what you realize? So this Jeep starts to flip, and what I really re remember the most is the sound of like metal on pavement which is like the worst sound ever like that <laughs> screeching and that's and there's the 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 violence of the impact um of flipping so um my jeep came to rest upside down but the roof had been ripped off just through from the impact of flipping five times and i don't remember any of that um apparently good samaritan stopped on the highway three guys picked my jeep up one of them pulled me out um and then my head was like cracked open like an egg. So Ugh. I had a massive skull fracture. My brain was bleeding, which was determined later on when I yeah, had my MRI and, and um, my uh, CAT scans and stuff. Um, massive concussion, of course. And uh, one of the guys took his shirt off and literally held my wound closed, you know, and they just, some other guy took his hat off and put it over my face because it was, it was a beautiful day. It, you, know, you know what the day reminded me of? 9-11. Do you remember 9-11 mm -hmm. here in New York? Super early there. in was, the morning. Was yeah. It was, it, it, but it was a beautiful day. Right. It was like 73, 74 degrees, cloudless sky, sunny, beautiful, and then tragedy struck. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking how beautiful the day was. And I remember thinking on this particular day just how beautiful the day was. And so when I came to, I was lying on my back and looking up at the sun in the sky. I was like, Fuck, why is my back so hot? And then I was like You came to it at the scene? I came to it at the scene. Okay. But by this time all the good Samaritans were gone and I was EMT worker. So I was like, why am I looking at the sky and why is my back so hot? And then I saw the guys with their yellow yellow uniforms. I was like, who are these guys? And um that's when I realized what had happened and I just kinda looked to the side and I saw my Jeep and it was upside down and it was smashed to smithereens. And I just couldn't believe, I couldn't believe it. It was like a, a state of suspended reality, mm -hmm. you know? And I was in total shock, so I felt no pain. I could only see out of one eye because there was like just blood all over my face and pooling in this eye. Um, and then they told me that like I was losing consciousness and while I was still there, so they put an IV in me to get fluids going, packaged me up, threw me in the, in the ambulance, um, cut my clothes off. Um, I only got to wear that dress. I know one you time. were thinking God about the dress. It. God damn it! They cut my shoes off. And I was like, "But wait, the zippers in the back <laughs> can't unzip me." You know. Um, so, uh, and then they took me to the hospital. And the hospital, I don't know how it is that I ended up at Huntington Memorial, but the shit has valet and a waterfall in it. Like I ended up at the right hospital. <laughs> and the staff was—they were just so great. So as soon as they brought me into the trauma room. Um, neurologists, trauma surgeons, they were all the flurry of activity and stuff. And then that's when people started to come in because they just, I don't know who got a hold of my phones. And would you believe it? I had two phones at the time. Neither screen was cracked. Jesus Christ. How the fuck? You, you got an iPhone? You had a screen protector I, on it? Th I mean, was it an iPhone? five <laughs> times. The screen protector is like, yeah, right. But I don't know. I had a, I had a Samsung and I had an iPhone and both of them, the screens were defined. That's a great commercial for both of them. I know, crazy. <laughs> um, it was it was insane. But yeah, so somebody got a hold of my phones and they just started calling everybody. Like when I say you everybody. You have a password? 
I don't know how she got into the phone. This is crazy. But she did. Got, she got in the phone, so she started calling my call log. And so she called everybody from Stephen A. Smith to Craig Wayans. I was like... <laughs> Not the first people I call, but yeah, you know, I, I love you guys. But I, mom, right? Maybe look for mom. <laughs> yeah, I was out of the country, and I didn't. I always put my phone away when I'm out the country. But yeah. somebody that was with me was like, "Yeah, Melissa Ford just was in a terrible car accident. Yeah, you don't know if she's gonna make it." I'm like, "What? Yeah. What? Was, what can I ask you? What's that like hearing when you like have oh, a man. friend? Like when was... I heard it, they said you were in a coma. Yeah, and they yeah. said. It I just dawned on me that I never, I've, I've never asked you about this because mm-hmm. I, I don't want to hear about it because mm-hmm. I'm, I, f- I feel the way I feel right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just happier when you, you're here. Mm-hmm. So I, I rather focus on that than focus on what actually, yeah, happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If that, if... It, no, I get it. I mean, I had men, like grown men, who are friends of mine, call and break down sobbing on the phone at the thought that I had that I'd moved on, that I passed away because of what I came to realize what I represented, represented in my friends' lie, lives, which made me feel really, really, really good, you know? And that whole saying of like, give people their flowers while they're here, it's really true. Right. Um, it, it, was, it was almost like I was attending my own funeral mm. from like the, from the people that came to my rescue, you know, from the people that defended you know, anybody who found humor in in this, you know, like, oh, well, was she driving her Honda Accord? OK, the joke is literally what, 12, 15 years old now? Like, find some right. new motherfucking material, people. Um, but like it just when people were finding making light of it, um, you know, friends like Claudia Jordan and my girlfriend so Miriam, um, they were they just went off on people and were posting like, no, this was really, really serious. And then the pictures got out that I didn't even know existed. Apparently, one of the Good Samaritans that stopped for me, he um, was afraid that his boss wouldn't believe that this is the reason he was late for work. So he took pictures of me, the accident, the scene, video and everything. Two days later, it's everywhere. Radar Online, People yeah. Mag- People Magazine, Us Weekly, So everywhere. he sent the pictures out? Uh, I, I, I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm in the hospital at this right. point, you know, and the th- surrounded by friends. Um, loved ones it was the outpouring of love and support was humbling and really beautiful i do um, remember stopping to pray on the beach thank you as soon as i heard that thank I, you. I, I hate when people you get that kind of news and yeah people you take run to social, social media. media i'm praying for you know when you know somebody for real for i feel like that's the last thing i want to do oh is- i mean the amount of people who insert them who inserted themselves into like my tragedy i was it was hysterical to me right. i was like but you didn't even call me. So you're posting about me on social media, you're adding me, and then I see in the comments, people are just like, oh my, they thought I died. I'm so sorry for your loss. Wait, hi. (laughs) I'm here. (laughs) I'm here. And what are you talking to that? To him for? So it's just, it's really interesting whenever people, you know, on social media insert themselves into other people's tragedy in order to like bring attention to themselves. It's it's a little sick, you know, narcissistic to a really- Very narcissistic. Messed up Somehow it's about yourself. Yeah. So how how is the road to recovery? How was that for you? So um, the road to recovery was was horrific. Um, when I left the hospital, I left using a walker. Um, I couldn't walk. I was having you know cognitive um, and speech uh, issues. Um, definitely memory. Um, still bad. Vertigo. Um, pain. Obviously, that right. set in. Um, but so I had to walk with a walker for about a month. And if you know Melissa, she is a gym buff, (laughs) always hiking, always Mm -hmm. her workouts are insane. Yeah. So I had to imagine for you physically as somebody who was always so active, Mm -hmm. how that must have been really difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, God bless my girlfriends. They would, they came over with food that they prepared for me or they'd come over to my house to cook Alicia Renee. Alicia Renee. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. my girlfriend, Sarah, um, Destiny. Um, they just, they really moved into action and became like moms to me. Um, you know, Alicia's really a grandma. (laughs) Yes, she is. Um, super old soul and just an amazing person, an amazing friend. Um, but it was, it was just, it was so frustrating and I was so angry. I was so angry and I was so sad and I was so, I was mourning my life because Mm. my life as I knew it was over, Mm. you know? Um, 
I was mourning the person that I was because I wasn't her anymore. I described it as being before the before me and the after me. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I'm starting to not recognize her anymore. And I didn't think I really made sense until my DMs and email was flooded with people who had had traumatic brain injuries from car accidents or war veterans or whatever. Um, just basically saying, I see you, I hear you, I understand everything that you're saying and giving me the most amount of advice as to exactly how to try to heal myself and work through and what to expect. So the support from total strangers was sometimes greater than people that I considered to be my closest friends. Mm -hmm. Um, you and think something died with you in that car accident? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. What was and it? I had to. I had a lot. I had moments of reckoning. You know, they were like it was really. It was a really dark time because I had to start to really analyze just myself. You know, um, who am I? What's my identity? Because it gets thrown into action or it's thrown into. It's, it's compromised when you have something like that happen to you you know you're like I'm, am i defined by this one event in my life mm. you know um and so you just you just spend so much time searching searching in the darkness searching through a broken brain um that just stuff is just not making sense like i remember trying to say the word exterminator and i couldn't my brain could not put it together i was like to ex I was in a stuttering and I was humiliated. Me being like the communication to having right. the 70,000 word vocabulary. I was like, who am I if my brain's not operating right? You know what I mean? Because that's what I've come to rely on. Not not even my looks, it's my brain. This is mm -hmm. what I need to function. I tell people that all the time. I'd be like, Melissa Ford is super smart. Like one of the most intelligent people you can ever have a conversation with. Yeah, thank I tell you. people that all the time. Thank you. Um, And so it, it just, I had to redefine who I was to myself, you know, and that was really hard. And so in those moments, that's when you start to discover that you're not that awesome and there's things that might have to change and there's mm. habits that might have to be broken. Um, so sometimes it just it, it takes breaking something apart in order to put it back together. And which, what's really interesting is around the time of the accident, mine and Jason's relationship was not at its best. It was it was pretty fractured. Right. I didn't know if the podcast was going to continue with me on it, to to be completely honest. He's exhausting. We can understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, I love him. But um, it was more than that. It was uh, the show. Be they, the show got in front of us, you know, like the success of the show got in front of us and he got a little blindsided, mm -hmm. you know, like um, tunnel vision. Right. And um, and then I have this habit of not speaking up for myself right so I'm, I'm non-confrontational mm -hmm. and I didn't defend myself and I wouldn't speak up when I had issues with him so I let them fester until they got to a, a, almost a breaking point and so I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back to the show just in terms of being able to fulfill the role that I played mm -hmm. um because so many women listen to our show and they listen for my you know perspective on things right and so I did not want to cheat anybody out of what it is that they've come come to love and expect from me. Um, so uh, with Jason and I, we had to repair our relationship before we could embark, you know, get back on the journey. How difficult is something like that to do? Um, being, you know, reflective and introspective and honest with yourself while you're dealing with a broken brain and stuff like that. Hard, mm -hmm. like really hard. There was moments where um, I did not understand like why my depression was so intense to where I felt suicidal. Um, and you scared me a couple times. Yes. No, I scared myself. You scared me a couple. Times. I, th I, I had friends knocking on the door thirty minutes after. I remember sending Alicia. You know, over. Go check on Melissa right now. They didn't leave me for three days. They took shifts. You know, they wouldn't, they were lying on my floor. They would not leave my sight because they were terrified. And they had every reason to be terrified because I was confronted with a monster. I did not have the tools to fight off. Mm -hmm. um, and so the onset of depression after a, a brain injury is very common because your dopamine and serotonin receptors, which are your natural mood stabilizers, they're compromised. Mine were practically like 
smashed. So I could not figure out how to see past the day in front of me. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it tomorrow looked so bleak. I could never have imagined that life would be like what it is right now. The gifts that just keep rolling in, like the blessings that just keep rolling in. I could, ne I could not see this. Right. But you and have to know if you're still breathing. It's I, for a reason. Right? I didn't want to. Mm. I didn't want to. I, I wanted, I wanted the pain to be over. So, the thought of committing suicide was really hard to like. How am I? How would I do it? I thought about it. Wow. I thought about how I would do it. And that's the first time you've never felt like that until after the accident. I mean, I've, I've suffered from depression. I remember, I remember how old I was the first time I felt depression. Well, how old were you? Nine. Mm. And it's really real. Like when we see, you know, uh, these horrible stories of nine-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 11-year-olds who have committed suicide and we think it's ridiculous, that kid is too young. No, no, it's, it's very real. I remember being nine years old and, and having feelings of depression related to bullying. Uh, nine years old, I went through a very awkward stage. Um, there's no pictures to prove it, so don't look for them. Um, but <laughs> but uh, yo, in Toronto, who got them? Yeah, no, there's there's Somebody probably there's probably some. God, it was an awkward. So I got mistaken for a boy. Um, <laughs> well, you won't have those problems. Uh, yeah, no, not not anymore. Um, but it was. Uh, so I just felt feelings of depression and isolation, and I didn't know how to communicate. I didn't know how to how to deal with the feelings. I didn't know what they were. Now, as an adult, I know what they are. Um, and so I've dealt with depression, but I've dealt with it in my own way. Mm -hmm. I give myself time to rest my brain, maybe do a little um, self-medicating. Marijuana. Mm -hmm. Marijuana. It's legal. You live in Canada. No, no, Hey, I'm a pothead, okay? Tequila. Here's what it is, okay? <laughs> That's what it is. But also a little bit of medicating, you know, self-medication with maybe a little bit too much alcohol. Tequila. Um, no. <laughs> Uh, girl, <laughs> bye. No, no, I'm a wino over here, and uh, and and vodka, darling, vodka. What about therapy? Um, I I've gone. I've definitely gone to therapy. Mm -hmm. I had the greatest therapist when I lived out here. Therapy and therapists are the, it's very dangerous territory because if you end up with the wrong therapist and they're irresponsible and they're just trying to make a career patient out of you because they want to keep that money rolling in, yeah, 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 you're yeah. screwed. You're yeah. screwed because you're already in a very vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. I happen to have a really fantastic therapist in New York, but I was scared to go and try and find a new one in, in L.A. I didn't trust it. I felt like trying to find a good therapist in L.A. is looking for a virgin in a whorehouse. <laughs> you know, so I just had Skype calls with my therapist in, in New York um, when I felt like things were getting really bad. But um, I just had to I just had to power through. Um, and I did so with my friend's help. I, d I wouldn't have been able to do it without them, though. What are the things you do now to handle, uh, I guess, things that might trigger past trauma? Um, hmm. What do I do? Well, first of all, I eat a really healthy, brain-healthy diet. Mm -hmm. uh, walnuts, <laughs> leafy greens, you know, um, wild-caught salmon, things like that, you know, high in omegas, good fats, avocado, um, MCT oil, coconut, da-da-da-da-da. Uh, I, I do things like that. When I left the hospital, they gave me the good drugs. Ooh, they get, listen, now I know why there's an opioid epidemic. I addicted. totally understand <laughs> I after that shit. I got for a second. No, for real. After a car accident. Did you? Yeah. So. Oxycontin? So this is, so morphine is a joke compared to fentanyl. And then above that is dilaudid. Mm. Ooh, that stuff was good. And I was terrified that I would leave the hospital with a bigger problem than what I came in with. Mm -hmm. So I stopped taking like the pet pain medications after I heard that the addiction kind of kicks in around like the seven to 10 day mark. Mm -hmm. If after consistent, um, uh, after they've been consistently administering it to you. So I started having my friends bring me some CBD, right? Tinctures, um, edibles, everything. Um, and CBD is different from THC doesn't make you high. Um, so I handled my pain relief with that and some Aleve, um, but I just I I refuse to get addicted. I refuse the narcos. I refuse the I refused it all. And so I just tried to take a holistic approach to my healing in terms of the foods that I ate, in terms of the CBD um, oils, tinctures, everything that uh you know e I put them on my wounds, sprays and, and ointments and whatnot, um, acupuncture, cupping, mm -hmm. um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, 
um, which is uh, a woman whose um, husband was a vet and he suffered from brain trauma, PTSD. She advised me to go do that. Um, and it was, these are the things that just worked for me. And then talking to my therapist and having my friends close. And I was a bear at times. I was very difficult to deal with because I was, I was just, I was an exposed nerve. Yeah, but as a friend, you, you have to understand that because you know what your friend just went through. Yeah, and I at times, you know, coupled with the the feelings of of anger and remorse and confusion and sadness, mm -hmm. um, I also felt like a burden to my friends because they are not their licensed therapists. This is not their gig. You know, our friends come into our lives, but I never want to, you know, and and we have ex we place expectations on them like mm -hmm. they place on us. But I felt like I was placing too much of a burden on my friends. But these circumstances were so different than any other circumstance. Absolutely. That yeah. That's what friends are really that's what friends supposed are for. to be there for when something in your life happens that's totally unexpected. Yes. Yeah. That could have been your demise. That's what they're there for, to help put everything back together. And they want to do it. That's actually when yeah. you're supposed to prove you're a friend. That's what I think Jason did to, for you a little bit. Kind of proved he was your friend. What do you mean? Because I think he was like, he really stepped. I mean, I don't know how much he stepped up, well, but it seemed like he stepped well, up. Well, this is what I, this, I, our, our relationship, like I said, had been, you know, kind of fractured at that time. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, what Jason did not know what to do with me. He's very persistent. So he kept trying to break through. But I was an immovable force and I was a source of confusion for him at that time. Um, and he was like concerned about the show. Obviously, you, he has to be. You know, I don't. I don't judge him for that because we built oh, this I thing, it. Yeah. and it was. You know, it was. It. It was a. It was a machine in itself. It had. It by this point, we're already on YouTube. We have hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of fans worldwide. So, you know, Melissa, I love you. Are you coming back to the show? Like, what's happening? Can I even have that conversation with you? You know. So he walked on eggshells, and Jason does not like like to walk on eggshells. Um, so, you know, he, he did not know how to, um, support me. So he did the best that he could, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and he's so used to being, you know, seeing me be super, super, super strong mm -hmm. that to see me being, to me, to see me so vulnerable. And so I don't want to use the word weak. You weren't weak, but you went through something like what friend does not understand that. I, he just was not used to, a lot of people were not used to seeing me in need. I think fragile would be a better word. But, thank you. Yeah. Fragile fra fragile is definitely the word. Um I was very I was very fragile. Um and I I hated every second of it, but I had to work through it because coming out the other end, I fa I discovered how much of a source of inspiration I was to others. Mm -hmm. Um and that made me feel really good. You know, I the purpose of life is to contribute to other people's lives, right. you know, to be a contributing member of society. Um, we all have a social contract with each other, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I just realized, I guess, my purpose. And mm -hmm. I will say this, you know, everybody was just like, God saved you for a reason. You know, you have a greater purpose. Last thing that you should say to somebody who's just gone through something like that, from my perspective, because that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody mm -hmm. who is literally still like reeling from right. what happened, you know? Um, and so I, it made me feel like, I don't know, I had survivor's guilt for a long time. Like, I don't know my purpose. Why did you bother saving me? Like, I just felt like I was an accident. And, when, and then I started going down the, the dark tunnel of thinking about, you know, just refugees in Syria and kids dying here and, you know, mass violence and stuff like that. And I'm just like, why was I spared and these people weren't? Did you find the answer to that question? <laughs> Radio. Mm -hmm. Like when I realized the power of the power that the microphone holds and you don't really think about it, you know, when you're doing it. Right. But then when I realized how many people were listening and cheering me on and ho and praying for my for my um say to, for my return and for my health um, and for my happiness, strangers and hundreds of thousands of them, it made me realize what my, what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. My purpose is to continue to um, inspire people. What, so 
you guys repaired your relationship yeah. or worked on it at that time. Yeah. What was it like for you the first time coming back to the show after that? It was it was really emotional because I missed it. You know, there, there'd be times where I'd watch something happening on the news and I'd be like, oh, my God, I got so much to say about that. Cricket, cricket, chirp, chirp. Ain't <laughs> nobody around, you know. And I was just like, I, it, it just it just felt so good knowing that we had built this thing, this this tangible thing. And there was people who's who who were invested in it. Mm-hmm. You know, the, there's people that listen to you guys every single day and they can't imagine their day without, you know, listening to you guys. You guys help them get through the monotony of their day or whatever it is. And we do the same thing. Um, and I just, I, 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 it was wonderful. It was wonderful coming back and it was wonderful sitting with my friend after having repaired our relationship in a way that we, feel unbreakable now okay you know and, and i'm sure you approached it with a, a new sense of purpose yeah definitely i mean what is your purpose now well i'll say this mm-hmm. that i didn't feel grateful for having survived the entire time i was recovering which was almost a year mm. um i i had moments still where i was really really angry um really really still just remorse you know just um mourning my old life and and everything. Um, and then I had a dream, um, maybe just a couple of days before the Social Impact Awards where we awarded you guys. Um, and you won an award too. I had no idea. A surprise award. Mm-hmm. I, I truly had no idea. They really kept that a secret from me. I had no like inkling mm-hmm. at all. So I'm reading like, so the Resilience Award is da 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 da. And as I'm reading, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and I burst out into tears because I realized what they had just done, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but a couple of days with, before that, I'd had a dream that I was in a car accident and I died. So, and I remember thinking to myself, I'm not ready. Like, I'm not, I'm not ready. And it's like, I don't know how to, I woke up feeling so grateful that I was alive, you know? I'm sorry, I don't mean to cry, it's but... okay, baby. We're happy Fuck now. that makeup <laughs> up. Fuck yeah. that makeup up, Melly. Thank you. <laughs> Let a good cry I get it. She paid for it. She want to make sure. You... <laughs> no, it's a, it's a solid today. Okay. Right, bitch? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, she'll touch you up. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, she will. But um, <laughs> I just woke up feeling so grateful that... You know, like that I I'd lived, you know, and I felt guilty all over again. Fuck, I'm a Scorpio. We carry guilt around like a bag of bricks, like voluntarily. But um, I just felt so um, grateful that like I got it. I got another chance. Like life is it's just it's really fuck. It's it's cliche to say, but it's it's really precious and you're lucky and you have to do whatever you want with it. Like whatever it is that you desire, follow your dreams. It's, it sounds so hokey, but to see our little tiny show that we started with the promise of absolutely nothing get picked up by this massive, massive monster called iHeart, the acknowledgement that we made an it made an impact in people's lives where they want to syndicate us nationwide. It's such a full circle moment, and it's like the greatest gift I could have been given besides my life being spared. I still feel like you have so much more to tell though. Like I feel like this is one aspect of it, but I've I've told you this before, like even the old video Vixen Day. Yeah. Like you can you can hold a lot of these young girls' hands right now and walk them through I try. a lot of the bullshit they're going through now. I try, but with, you know, youth comes arrogance. Mm-hmm. And I get it. <laughs> I had it. Um, you know, but life has a way of humbling you right. <laughs> like a mofo um our life was like a real life reality show yeah back then yeah <laughs> yeah it was um <laughs> you just need yeah. to tell your story no i yes. mean i no i mean trust me the book is is starting it's it's almost completed you know um and there's there's just there's a lot to tell besides the car accident but that's the precipitator you even know you're I mean? not being from the united states yeah you had issues with that at a point in time too oh i was as uh i was illegal as a mexican bus boy are you legal now totally are you, you sure 
Well, Trump is watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. Well, let's pass on that and no, keep I'm, on moving. Yeah, no, I'm good. I got Trump a green card. I'm a landed immigrant. Trump, <laughs> Trying to get rid Trump. of me. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, no, but I just, the book is going to be filled with a lot of stuff and it's going to be very anecdotal, you know, with a lot of the stuff that I've learned along the way, um, you know, uh, along this thing we call life. Yes. Um, and I think I've got some some things that I could like, you know, some advice that I could give the youngins. Mm -hmm. I keep a nice um, roster of mentees around me. They range from like 20 to like 33. And I just, I'm surrogate mom or big sister or auntie and I keep them in check. Mm -hmm. You know, I just. I'd know. like to help with the book, by the way. Oh, I will accept that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will accept that because uh, I, you know, I, I, I think I have a lot. I think I have a lot to say that a lot of people would probably be a little surprised by. One thing I am going to talk more about was at the time that um, the accident happened, I was madly in love with somebody and um, he never showed up. No. Yeah. Fuck him. Well, yeah. You Can you imagine? He, How, never, can, I know. he didn't never hit you, that's never he showed up, nothing. That's when he really he, pulled a step up. He never, he never stepped up or showed up. Wow. That's crazy. He sent me flowers. Yeah. So here's the thing is like, you know, wow. so when I would to him, I was, you know, the glamazon. I'd walk in to meet him in a in the hotel lobby or the, you know, the restaurants or whatever. And it, all eyes would be on me. And, you know, I, I could sashay, you know. And so I was I was a, I was a source of pride for him. And, you know, but it was superficial. Right. It was synthetic love, obviously, you know. Trophy, um, trophy. That was very much yeah. his, his, his trophy, his doll. And then when the accident happened, his doll was broken. And he no longer wanted to play with that toy. That's crazy. Has he, has he reached out now? Did he seen that the doll is back together? Man. Better than ever? <laughs> yes, he has. And he got silent. As he should. You should never fuck with him ever again. Oh, no, 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 no. I, 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 it doesn't, uh, it took, I was dealing with a broken head, broken heart all at the same time. Um, I didn't know which one was going to kill me. I just, one of them was, Damn, was going that's... to. It was, it was, I wouldn't wish what I went through on my worst enemy. Like the, the darkest days where I thought, you know, where I was con contemplating what method of suicide I was going to um, employ. Um, and just the, 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 the sorrow that I felt. You know, like just deep in the pit of my stomach, eating me from the inside out was, I don't know. But you know what? You cannot appreciate, you know, or have euphoric highs without those abysmal lows. Yeah. It's impossible. Right. Um, life undulates like a roller coaster. You can, We don't get this even keel stuff. In order for us to celebrate our wins we have to have like suffered some incredible losses it's chapters in a book exactly sometimes when things are going too great i'm like all right what's oh about my god to i'm terrified I'm yeah. I'm, oh shit i'm happy i think that's I'm anxiety terrified. though I, I get that yeah. a lot too yeah but then sometimes you really gotta you gotta do the opposite and yeah. step back and be like <clears throat> i earned this yeah yeah i deserve this yeah it's 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 hard to think to yourself i've earned this i deserve this um i've worked really hard and i'm worthy um and that's one thing that, like, you know, I always want to stress to not just women, but we need it a lot. Yes. You know, we do need it a lot. Um, but to everybody, you know, I I want everybody to just, un, you know, have a have a sense of worthiness and understand a strong concept of self, self-esteem, self-worth, self-confidence. Um, you just you have to. Mm -hmm. No one can love you if you don't love yourself. Like I. Like I said, life becomes one big cliche the older that you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and yeah. Simple cliches, too. Very simple. Because you realize as you get older, life really is simple. Yeah. We, very, we complicate it. Yeah, we we really do. And um, the result of the accident is I never really was the most sentimental person. Like, I was never really um, ma very materialistic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my things did not own me. I could pick up and walk out of an apartment yes. and never come back. Sell ev sell everything on on Craigslist. I don't care. I got wings on my ass. I have dis destination addiction. So what I always say to people is, if you get the opportunity to travel, you need to do that for yourself. Right. Please do. You have got to see how other people live. You have to absorb you know yourself in other people's culture. I just I have an intolerance. I have a no tolerance for intolerance. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so whenever I talk to people who are, you know, 
smaller minded or your their horizons haven't been you know opened up i'm just like get out. honey get a get yeah. a passport please get and out just there. and go somewhere you know <laughs> for yourself you know i read um, once where you said uh, fame feels like prison yeah it does yeah it does found on that a little bit um I have also said there's. I'd rather be rich and anonymous than famous and broke because definitely been famous and <laughs> broke. I agree with you there. <laughs> um, but sometimes fame feels like a prison because you know your your every move is watched, especially now with social media. You know we used to be able to like do our dirt right right out in the open. If yeah, you're, throw you know, bottles like, in the club, God damn it. Fights. You know, no, but now we don't. <laughs> every, there's a camera in your face, that fishbowl effect, mm -hmm. um, and it's just like you know uh, you're just you're you're judged by. Oftentimes, just one one particular chapter in your life, you know. That's why one of the chapters in my book is going to be called "Be Careful How You Introduce Yourself to the World." Dot dot dot, because they'll never let you forget it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in that way, I felt like you know, fame and notoriety and and visibility has been a prison because I've been defined by this one tiny little chapter in my life. You know, being yeah, the yeah. video vix and stuff, and there was just su such a lack of understanding. Um, BET did a documentary called Vixen. They, let me tell you something, they messed up by not putting that on the actual channel. I guess they wanted to draw attention to BET Digital, mm -hmm. you know, and put it up on the website. But that documentary was the best one that I've ever seen done really? in terms of how it covered, you know, the, the era of music videos, the one preceding the era I was in where it was like mini motion pictures when the budgets were super inflated super high. and stuff. Oh my God. Like they big, would do a million dollar video. Big Pimpin' was was a million dollars. Um uh Jada Kiss Knock Yourself Out was six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I'm with a um, Juliet in those times. Those leading ladies. I was uh, the I I was the highest paid girl at at the time. Um so I was getting like uh five to ten thousand dollars a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um and you know the 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 years where um, Napster and piracy and and all the down the illegal downloading of music and the record companies were hemorrhaging money and so the budgets were starting to go like from huge to like absolutely nothing to where they were like literally the you know my paycheck um, mm -hmm. you know at that point I taken the the exit ramp so it just it covered everything and then it covered stripper culture and how that changed the face of, of music videos at the same time that they were becoming really formulaic. Um, and then that book, you know, uh, the book, Superhead. yeah, that book. So they interviewed her and here's what I'll say about her. You know, we've never met. Oh, um, really? Yeah. We've never met. And what I'll say about her is she gives a good interview. Mm -hmm. I'll, I, I'll give her that. Like she, her she, first book is amazing. She that was a captivating, New York Times bestseller. <laughs> captivating. But what pissed me off is the fact that it, came to define all of us. Right. And that was her experience that she had with she was going through in the business. Yeah. And you weren't doing the things that she was I doing. was on the opposite end of the spectrum. She was saying a whole lot of yes and I was saying a whole lot of no. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to I didn't have to and did not want to do whatever it was that was, you know, happening in her life. Um so that book coming to define all of us. And I thought that it was just my cross to bear. But when I watched the documentary and I saw Buffy the Body um, talking about it and Gloria Velez talking about it. I realized that they all suffered. Yeah, um, uh, um, Queen Row. Um, what's it? Lola. Oh, Lola yeah. Monroe. Yeah, Lola Monroe. Yeah, I forgot um, about her. Uh, she, she's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's she's what I'm so beautiful. She's a rapper. She was signed to Wiz for a second, right? I think she. I'm yeah, not, she was signed. To, is she still signed to him? I, I'm not sure. That's the last thing I heard about it. Actually, she and she had a baby. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She um, married, I believe. Um, but she was talking. You know her husband. He's been up here. Oh. Um. Oh my God. You know the rapper. He was signed to Bad Boy. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Because I feel mm -hmm. bad. I forgot. He's a dope rapper too. Yeah. But she was. They were all explaining how this book came to define all of us, and I didn't know that they they were suffering from you know, like that intense scrutiny and judgment like I was. Mm -hmm. I was at so much the forefront, like the blueprint, you know, the the, the most recognizable one um, that I felt like it was just me that was, it felt this was my burden, but it burdened, it, it burdened all of us. Wow. Um, that book was just, the, that was her experiences and it was frustrating that it came to define us. So. Um, I can't believe you guys have never met. Can you believe it? And we, she's always in LA. Doesn't she live in LA too? 
I have no idea. King Los, by the way, that's her. Oh, Los. Right. Yeah. Oh, all right, I know yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I, I guess she lives in LA. I don't know. We've never cross path like we've never I think we've been in the same rooms at the same time but we've never I'm surprised y'all haven't had around Hollywood Unlocked don't give Jason any ideas please <laughs> I saw y'all just did Wendy Williams before we uh, move on to the, what's the difference yeah. between IG models and video victims and what advice would you give to the IG models of today oh, I don't even know if that's the same equivalent though IG models and video vixens. I'm not sure. Well, anybody can be an IG model. It's not like someone has to choose you. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't even know if that's you could just post up a picture and now you're an Instagram model. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the difference was being chosen, being casted, um, you know, uh, during music video days. And like, I mean, when I say they scrutinized who the leads were going to be, like this was, an, this was a process. Leads got switched out. Sometimes. Sometimes they did. <laughs> if a certain somebody walked on set, Machine lead girl Melly. might lose her job. <laughs> before, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, that sounded so shitty. No, before um, you walk in, <laughs> Drum, who's a, he's young, he hates everything old. He hates us. He hates us. He hates us. <laughs> but he asked us, he said, who would be the M Melissa Ford of, of this era? Uh, who would be the Melissa Ford of this era? Hmm. Can I get some choices? Help me out here. We said Bernice Burgos. Okay. I, I, I would go with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd definitely go with that. We, we had her on the show as well. Mm -hmm. um, super beautiful. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, yeah, we're not that far. In, we're not that far off in age. So that's why. That's, yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to think. Of, I was thinking somebody younger. You know, but coming. Uh, yeah, but I would I would definitely mm -hmm. say her. She's super beautiful. Fun. I'm trying to think of somebody else who might, like, does radio, does... Uh, you know, you were a writer. Well, at the time, we didn't know Melissa had all of that to offer. She was always used to write, though. Yeah, I but um, see, that's, a, yeah, I mean, people didn't know that, like, I was a columnist for Smooth mm -hmm. Magazine, that I actually wrote the, as a matter of fact, I wrote the column, and they used to dumb it down, because they were like, Melissa, what do you, th right. th this, our reader this is, is not going to understand <laughs> yeah. what you're saying. And I was just like, let them rise to the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but back then, all we knew was Jessica Rabbit. I understand. And so, by the way, that was enough for a young yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Like but I wanted people to understand <laughs> yeah. that beautiful women are b being beautiful and being intelligent are not mutually exclusive right. concepts. You know, you like, can be both. You can be both. And there's plenty of us that exist. You know, beautiful and attractive women that are in incredibly intelligent and you know whatever. Um, but. So I d did write, and then I started hosting for BET and mm -hmm. Stars in Black and ESPN, um, and then acting came into you know into. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of who does all of that now. I don't know, and then and then Nobody. radio, and then I decided I wanted to come to radio. So so in 2007, I came to Sirius, and that's where we met. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've done, I've been in so many different genres of the entertainment business, but I'm constantly just judged for that, like that one. Part of my that life. was the, so the, long ago. The, it, that was so long ago. The the music the videos earlier part of you know. Your life. It's, so it's like it, it is what it is. But in terms of like advice for the IG models, just don't be just don't be a one note chick. Don't just be, you know, a bunch of curated, um, photoshopped pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, right? I mean, what are you gonna do when Instagram starts taking away our likes and our analytics and stuff like that? Let me tell you what I know. I'm I'm positive that Instagram is doing. I'm positive that they're trying to figure out how to make the app how the, to make the app make money yeah, because basically absolutely. Facebook Facebook and Instagram have really generated no money. Mm -hmm. What they're going to do really? is they're they're going to create a pro version. So you can have regular Instagram, but your analytics are going to be taken away from you. But if you want to be able to show your likes in order to prove to you know companies uh, for, to uh, for sponsorship and advertising and brand ambassadorships, you're going to have to pay like Five dollars, ten dollars, nineteen ninety nine. And this is just a theory, by the way. She's not saying this is happening. It's a theory that you no, have. it's it's my theory, but mm -hmm. I see it coming. I'm right. positive. I, I, this is what I see coming. Because they're experimenting with all different kinds of things now. Yeah, they're why? already saying we're going to take away likes. We're testing this out. And the reason, and then even how you see the feed on Instagram, yeah. sometimes and things that are up from like two days ago will be the first thing. I'm like, why is this? Yeah. the first thing on my page. Yeah, and the reason that they gave that they want to take likes away, like we're concerned about people's. You know what is it like just mental health. mental health about you know like self esteem of the lights. I agree and with that though. They're full of shit. That ain't the reason that they're doing it. No way. But big businesses don't care about 
you know, hu- that is true. humanity. Mm-hmm. That's trying, not how capitalism works. That's not how capitalism works. They're trying to make a profit. So, like, whatever. We, we got to yeah, figure it out. What, okay, so what do you think that they're going to, like, just, what, what can we spoon feed them? Oh, yeah, boom. Okay, cool. Great marketing ploy, but it's bullshit. It's not true. So I'm convinced that they're all going to offer a pro version that we that they're going to charge us for in order to, you know, have that analytic information to provide to people like Samsung, BMW, whoever it is that's, you know, sponsoring your page or yeah, I whatever. I Facebook and Instagram are making money off advertising. Yeah, because I mean, they do have those paid ads you can do and you can also pay to boost yeah, something. Yeah, so they've, ha- so they've had to figure out ways in right. order to generate income because these are free sites. Mm-hmm. Like, these are free social media sites. We don't have to pay for them. So they were like, we got to change this model, <laughs> you know? The, that's just the all right. Let's see yeah. if she predicted it. We're gonna save this part. Oh yeah, listen. So when Instagram, I'd be comes predicting. Out. I'd be predicting stuff. What's your last I'd, big prediction? I'll tell you the first one. Okay. I'll tell you the first first one that I had that was captured on TV. It was Super Bowl, two thousand six. It was Seattle playing Pittsburgh, at big football fan. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you're. Still a Dallas Cowboys fan? Absolutely. Okay. That don't change. Okay. All right. I know. Like I'm a Giants fan. That don't change. I don't you don't jump off the bandwagon because <laughs> your team, you know, isn't performing terrible, well. Yeah. It, well, you're terrible. Okay. Um, so anyways, <laughs> um, I was interviewing Scoop Jackson and uh Stuart Scott, uh rest in peace. Rest in God, peace. he was such an amazing man. Um, and we were on Ford Field in Detroit. And I was interviewing them. I said, I said to Stuart, I said, uh, any Super Bowl predictions? And he was like, like, what do you mean? Like, score? I said, yeah, Pittsburgh's going to take it 21-10. That year, Pittsburgh won 21-10. Damn. Wow. Yeah. That was my... Did they give you a ring? I didn't get shit. And no, I didn't <laughs> bet on the game like a dumbass. Wow. Yeah, I didn't bet on the game. I hope somebody saw that and was like, I'm betting on this. I'm literally watching the game. I was like, these Negroes are going to win 21-10. <laughs> too late to place a bet somebody where's floyd shit <laughs> <laughs> well our slightly yeah. psychic friend melissa ford we yes. thank you so much yeah, for man. coming through it's so happy, so happy to see here. you all the time thank you thank you guys i just i i love you guys so much and we love you more and i and i love the i I'm, i love being part of the i Heart family we're really excited about that so our show is uh nationwide mm-hmm. it's on weekends yeah. All right, we're back together again. I love it. I know. <laughs> All right, it's Machine Gun Melly, Melissa Ford, it's The <laughs> Breakfast Club. <laughs>